Hi, this is Salman Lalana in Manos Berlakis, and this is case 220 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the difficulties that can arise when there is a stent placed from the saphenous vein graft across the distal anastomosis. The patient was a gentleman who had previous coronary bypass graft surgery, and then he had a failure of the saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery, multiple episodes of failure, and he was sent for recanalizing the native right coronary artery CTO. So this is the diagnostic angiogram, and this is the failing bypass graft that has multiple stents. Unfortunately, there is actually a stent going from the bypass graft into the native coronary artery, and this was the source of a lot of challenges as we will show during the case. We do have a fairly complex anatomy. This is the distal uh, right coronary artery, the PDA. It is unclear whether the graft was going to the PDA or the distal RCA, at least on the original pictures. So what to do? We do have uh, a clear proximal cap, but there's a side branch there. The length is about 30 millimeters with heavy calcification. The distal vessel is heavily diseased, and there is the previously placed stent across the anastomosis, essentially jailing the native vessel. And then there is a collateral pathway, but unfortunately, it will be extremely hard to go retrograde. The graft empties straight into the native coronary artery, and that doesn't seem to be any retrograde option. So our plan here was to go undergrade with wiring or ADR going before the bifurcation for the re-entry, and the retrograde was unlikely to work. We did several attempts for wiring undergrade, but that did not work, and then we actually placed the balloon in the marginal branch at the proximal cap, and after doing that, we were able to knuckle. This is a Gladius Mongo wire, and the Gladius Mongo could be then uh, redirected to follow the course of the distal RCA. Before doing the side base, the wires just kept on going inside the marginal branch, but here we now have formation of a nice knuckle going along the course of the distal right coronary artery. So we advanced the knuckle, but then it became fairly large and the direction was not exactly the direction that we wanted to have, despite multiple attempts. So we decided to use the Carlino technique to clarify where we are, and there is a fairly large subintimal space there which did not help us very much. We then tried uh, to use um, different uh, wires, and this was a filter XT that forms tight knuckles, and now we actually were able to reach the native RCA just proximal to the distal bifurcation. We did an IVUS into the main vessel, and then we did multiple attempts to puncture through the previously placed stents using a Pro-12, a Hornet-14, and a Staton-20, but these were not successful. There was under-expansion in the previous stents, so we placed a 3.5 millimeter shock wave intravascular lithotripsy balloon and uh, gave uh, 100, uh, heavy 80 pulses in that vessel. And then try it again to enter. We use the balloon to kind of tuck the stand, expand the stand as much as possible. And uh, we used a Hornet 14 and a Staton, but still we just could not puncture. The wire seemed to just go across around the stand towards the right posterior lateral. We then decided to use the venture caster that can provide very strong support. But once again, we were not successful. At this point, the patient... Uh, developed uh, some chest discomfort and um, had some ST segment changes. He was found to have some disruption of the posterior lateral, likely from the extra plug wire. And uh, that was the reason why we ballooned it. And once we ballooned it, he was much better. Then we decided to try retrograde through the saphenous vein graft using the venture and using the undergrade equipment as a target, but unfortunately, once again, we were just not able to puncture that. So finally, we decided to do ADR into the right posterior lateral. So we advanced the Mongo, we did the Stingray balloon, and we did essentially a stick and drive using the Gaia X3. Nice um, advancement, and now we have overlap of the wire that has been placed there through the saphenous vein graft. We then did the Nivus, and to our great surprise and pleasant surprise, we had actually re-entered inside the previously 
place 10. We did not re-enter distal to the previously placed 10, but actually we went through the previously placed 10, which was wonderful. But we still wanted to get a wire into the um, right posterior descending artery. So we used the Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter, but the angulation was just too acute and we just could not get the wire to go backwards. We tried the reversed guide wire technique, but that didn't work. And then um, um, we had uh, different uh, ways to get back. It just could not make the bend to work. We ballooned the RCA and the right posterior lateral. We had some good expansion of the vessel there. And then we decided to stand. Even though we had not secured the PDA, we did have access to it through the saphenous vein graft. That would help us troubleshoot if there was a problem, which became very important later on. So we placed four dragoluting stents essentially all the way back to the ostium of the right coronary artery. And although the flow was great, here we haven't placed the final stent, we've lost, unfortunately, flow into the PDA. But no worries, because we did have the saphenous vein graft, so the patient was stable. Also, we have this area that needed an additional stent. So we wired from the saphenous vein graft through the PDA back into the right posterior lateral and did a kissing balloon angioplastic with balloons through the native and through the saphenous vein graft. And that restored actually good flow into the right posterior descending artery. And then we placed one more stand into the native right coronary artery, postulated the stands aggressively, and that provided a nice final result, Timothy flow into the right coronary artery. We still have good flow into the PDA. We did not coil the graft as we considered doing initially, and the patient had a good recovery. There are several lessons from this complex case. The first one is that when there is a stand going from the native saphenous vein graft into from the saphenous vein graft into the native coronary artery across the distal anastomosis, that makes uh, crossing undergradely of the native vessel very challenging. In this case, we were actually fortunate to be able to puncture through the previous stand and advance a wire into the right posterior lateral. So before doing that standing, one may want to consider doing a PCI of the native coronary artery, which would have made things much simpler in this case. In this case, we thought we did ADR, but in the end, what we had actually done was puncturing through the previous stand. What was critical to success is unclear, but potentially the shock wave, the balloon dilatation, the use of stiff wires and various microcatheters was likely what led to success. Also, to actually advance uh, uh, an extra plug wire, we require to use the side base technique, very, very useful when there is a side branch on the proximal cap. And finally, the IVUS was critical here to understand that we had actually crossed through the stand, ensure good stand expansion, and um, help us op optimize the geographic result. Thank you.